Hey YouTube, RJ. Okay, we're back to building our RF mixer for our radio. We're going to need an RF mixer and a modulator demodulator. I went ahead after we got done with the Lynx diode tester, went ahead through all those diodes. Well, I didn't go through all of them. Let me back up. I went through enough to get an assortment of some match diodes here for us for our build. Let's just test a couple. Kick the unit on. Let's uh, just take a look real quick. I'm testing at 20 milliamps. 20 milliamps gives me a little better, a little better, bigger spread between the diodes. So let's see how I did on these. Are supposed to be very, very close. Let's make sure that we are getting very, very close. Oh yeah. As you can see, we've got some match diodes now that we can use. Yeah. And remember that that's 10 times, so it's not 7.29, it's 0.729 volts. And so there's four right there that are matched. I'll put these two back in the bag. So we're going to use those to build our mixer. Here is our diodes. So tester works great. We're going to move on now. I'm going to start building. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and build the mixer now, the, the main part of the mixer. And then what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to build a diplexer. I'm going to end up needing two of these. So I may go ahead and build two, but I'm going to build a diplexer as a separate board that we can put in place and take off. I want to look at a diplexer, talk about a diplexer, and see what uh, a diplexer can do for us on our mixers. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got to make a, our transformers for our dia ring mixer. I've already made one here. As an example, you can see that it's trifolar around. It's three wires wrapped together and then 10 turns of that on the toroid. And I'll try to get a really good shot here for you. Get you where you can really see it. And I used three color wire and you might notice one is just slightly larger gauge. Uh, these are 27. This is a 25. Plenty large enough. The 25 is the single primary and the twin serial windings will be the 27 gauge smaller wires. I've got to make another one of course and that's the one I'm going to video to show you how to do it. I've got a paintbrush that I put on the lathe and tapered and then put little flat spots to put into wine but first thing we have to do is make our tri filer wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these equal length wires and we're going to put them together on one end matched up to where we can all three of them and then we're going to give it a little twist in this direction because that's the way we're going to twist the wire and then we're going to pull it out nice and even tightly and we're going to do the same thing at the other end. And what this is going to do is twisting this end is going to let us lock these together in the vise. I've got my little mini vise hooked to my bench here. Works plenty well for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill and it's set to drill forward. So it's from the back of the drill, it's turning clockwise. And I'm going to take and just put it in the chuck. Get over here where I can handle it all inside of the camera view, if I can. I'm going to put in the chuck and tighten the chuck up. Try to try tighten the chuck up on the wire if I could talk. Okay, now, don't tighten it tight, but pull your wire straight up. Very little tension, straight over. Probably I'm out with the drill of the view, but you'll get the idea here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start turning nice and slow. Oops. That pulled out. I didn't tighten it enough. Into the... See, things go wrong for me too. Get it back in the vise good. Tighten it up a little tighter this time. Okay, let's try this again. So keep her pulled out. Give it nice and slow. Now I come out of the chuck. Normally I do this with no problem at all, but when I'm filming it for you guys, of course I'm going to have problems. That's the way things always go, but 
hey, at least you know it's real world, you know that's, uh, you know, I mean, I could start all over and, but you know, I want you to know that, you know, when things don't go perfectly right for you guys, it's okay, because uh, all of us, it doesn't always go right, you know, so I'm getting it, all I'm doing is trying to get it centered back up in the chuck good again and tighten it up a little better. Okay, now, let's try this again. Just a little pull up on tension, hold it straight, start winding, watch your turns. You want to get a three or four an inch. That's about right. And now we release it from the drill and we uh, release it from the vise. And there you go. You've got your tri filer wound wire. And so we leave it as it is. And I'm gonna open up my little vise here. And I'm going to put the flat spots into the mini vise. This is a cheap little vise. I bought this vise for like four bucks on AliExpress. And it, it has a clamp that clamps it to the bench. So I take it off when I don't need it. So now, whatever size toroid I'm using, for the most part, most of them I can, I can fit on here. Uh, you know. And what's nice about it, it helps you when you're winding because it holds it all together, but it also lets you pull the toroid down and press the inside of the wire against the toroid tight, which is, is nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out. I'm going to give me plenty of wire hanging out for my first turn. And then I'm going to push this down a little bit, flattening that against the toroid on the inside. And this is your first turn. Every time you go through the core of a toroid, that's a turn. So here's a here's our first turn. So we're going to take our bring us around. We're going to lift this up off off of being tight on our stick. We're going to feed through again for our second turn. <laughs> I'm just having lots of fun today. So let's get our first turn back in. Holding our first turn, it's always the first wrap that's a big. It's a little more difficult. We're going to pull her up. Going to kind of line things up, pull it through, and then what I do is I like to get it pulled as tight as I can, but don't break your wires. Pull it, and then I like to push this side flat against the toroid right here, the, the, the winding that I've come through, this outside part of the winding. I like to push it up against the toroid, pull some tension, come back down and pull down on the stick a little bit, and that way it keeps it all tight up against the toroid. Now, you can use thinner wire. I didn't have it. 30 gauge works great. It's a little easier to flatten around the toroid. It's perfect for this application. I just happen to have these three colored wires that weren't those sizes. So I'm, uh, I'm using what I have. Sometimes you do that, as you know. So pull it up tight. Push it on the stick. Then when I loosen it up, I push this in and pull a little tight again. And just keep doing that. And I keep working around. And you see me? See how this is going. Now I'm going to go ahead. I've got three turns on this of 10. Come on around again. And we just do that. And I'll cut. Come back when I'm done. No reason for you to watch every wind. But it's the same thing. You pull it up tight. Work it with your finger to get it down against the toroid. Spread them open a little bit. You don't want them too close together. Pull them up tight. Push it down in the stick. And just keep going. So I'll be back in a minute. And we'll see how I did. Okay, we're back and we've got 10 wraps on here. Got extra wire, which is helpful. And so these are well. I'm going to try to get you a little better view. And what we're going to do now is we don't need this anymore. So I'll go ahead and take this down and out of our way. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to jump back over this one. You see I've pulled and spread the wires apart. You can see there's three different colors. We know that the heavier gauge wire here and here is my primary winding. So we're going to we're going to pull those off separate, okay? Then we have our green windings and our copper looking windings. We know those go together. Let me pop up a picture real quick. If you look at the toroid uh, the transformer, I'm sorry, the transformer schematic here, you'll see that 
one end of one winding goes to the beginning of the other winding to put them in series. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take and we're gonna call the green wires the bottom coal and this the top coal. So what I'm gonna do is take the end of the top coal and I'm gonna connect it to the bottom or the beginning of the bottom coal. First, I've gotta get them straightened out around here. I've got beginning here, ending of green there, and there and here, okay. So what I'm gonna do is the end of the green winding here, I want to connect it. So here's my green winding, goes from here to here. Here's the end of it. From the end, I wanna go back to the beginning of the copper colored one. So these two right here are gonna to go together. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to strip, or I should say remove the enamel using my little Clipex tool. That's what it's for. As you can see, it just pulls that enamel right off those wires. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. Once I've got them cleaned up, I'm gonna take the two and I'm gonna wrap them together. That's our center tap on the secondary side of the transformer. Now, I'll solder that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you watch me solder it. Doesn't make any sense to do that, but I'll twist it up good. So now we've got our primary coal, our center taps here for over here, and this is our secondary. That's how we make our transformer. I'll skin these back and prepare them to go on to the board. And when I go to put it on the board, I'll go ahead and solder this at that time because I'll be soldering these in place. I've just got to turn around and do that for this one right here. I'm going to do the exact same thing I've just showed you. And that is how you create a trifolar transformer for your double balance diode mixer. Give me a second. I'll get this one done. We'll come back when I mount them on our board and we'll check out our diode ring and these mounted and then we'll go right into testing and see how they're how they perform. Be back. Okay we're back on the bench. I've got these transformers soldered in place. If you look here what I'll show you is it's part of just just the way the schematic shows. You've got the LO side over here with your primary the heavier heavy gauge in my case winding coming through and back returning to the ground. Now, on the LO side, your tapped coal from the other side also connects to ground. So basically, you've got your tap lead from this transformer, tap winding, the tap of the winding, I should say, to ground and also your primary. So all three go back to ground here. So your signal comes in, runs through going to ground, the tap also is to ground. Then your other, your, your, your full length series windings go to opposite sides of the diode ring. You see the diodes here all in head to tail, head to tail, head to tail, all the way around. They go here, doesn't matter which connection of the winding goes, doesn't matter. Then you come over and you have the same transformer, but in this case, the primary comes in here on this input, which is your RF, goes through the primary back to ground. That's the only thing that grounds over here. The tap of the coal comes off and connects to your RF out here, which is your IF port. So this is your IF here. And just to be on the leery side, I'm going to lift that a little bit up off the board to make sure we're not too close. So it comes over and this gives you your IF and of course your IF is your ground, you know, your connectors connected to ground and your IF coming out the center pin. And then of course the other two windings go to the opposite sides of the diode. You can just make out here, it comes over and hits here, it comes across here to hook here. And that's it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick back up and when we pick back up, I'm going to have this hooked up on the bench here where we can actually put on the spectrum analyzer and we'll feed a couple signals in from our signal generator and we'll see what uh, what we get. We'll see how it looks, so. Okay, here we are. We're um, set up on the bench. I've got the spectrum analyzer fired up. I've got the signal generator fired up. What we're looking at here is I'm injecting RF frequency of four megahertz, and then I've turned around and injected an LO of seven 
being the theory being we want to push our 4 megahertz signal at the end of the 80 meter band into our crystal filter around 11 megahertz. And you can see that uh, if I go to frequency here, sorry, I've jumped in there. Uh, let's get it where it needs to be. There's my 4 megahertz signal, very weak signal coming in. Okay. And if I go to the next, there's my 7 megahertz signal coming in. And there is my 10.97, my 11 megahertz. And what was that other peak? Well, let's back up over here. And you'll see that's 3. Well, why do I have a 3? Well, think about it. You, it's your plus and your minus. So 11 is if you plus 4 megahertz and 7 megahertz. On the other hand, if you take 7 and minus 4 from it, you end up with 3. So there, there you see we, we're really suppressing our LO and our, our, uh, our LO signal. Our RF signals, I've got it turned down quite weak. And you can see that it's moving the signal over. We're getting just what we'd expect to see. So it looks like our mixer is working just the way it is supposed to. I'm pretty happy with it. Watch our, watch our 11 megahertz. I'm going to reach up to the signal generator, go over to my 7 megahertz LO frequency and start changing it. Look as I lower it. Look as I, as I increase it. I can push those signals all over. The only signal that doesn't change is our IF, or I'm sorry, our RF signal coming in over here. You can see it just there bouncing up and down. But I can push these signals around just by changing frequency. So that's exactly what our mixer does. So our mixer is working just the way we want. So it's that simple. Now I'll build another one of these as a modulator for the other side of the transceiver where your voice, it'll work as a demodulator modulator. It's for when you speak in the mic, it's going to modulate your sig the signal with your voice. Also, when we get our signal out of our crystal filter, we want to demodulate the signal out. So it'll do both. So I'll build another one just like this, but because it's going to be working with audio frequencies, I'm going to put a audio diplexer on it and we'll talk about that. I'll show you where I came up with that and we'll look at the difference of with and without it and such. But this should finish up this. This is your mixer. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to do some testing and do a video on, a, on comparing this to a active solid state and we'll look at the difference under the same conditions later in another video. So hopefully this was uh, educational and entertaining. I uh, hope you hung in there with me. And I hope to see you in the next video. So thanks for hanging out with me.